we welcome you to the National Sports Center in Blaine, Minnesota. As match day 16 rolls along and it's a Western Conference showdown tonight as Real Monarchs are on the road to take on MNUFC2. Pleasant good evening everyone, Justin Galanti, so glad you're with us. A look at the Western Conference table as we enter the night. Minnesota, which has games in hand on a couple teams ahead of them, playing very well right now. Seventh place, tied with St. Louis with 23 points. Real Monarchs trying to move up that Western Conference table. 18 points at the moment, but certainly a group that has been playing better over the last couple of weeks. This is the second and final meeting of the regular season between these two sides. It was all the way back on March 24th when they played for the first time opening night of the MLS Next Pro season. And the conditions were quite different that night. It was snowing out in Utah, a three nil win for Minnesota on the road to open the season. So MNU FC2 hoping to sweep the season series. Real Monarchs trying to get them back on the road tonight. Starting 11s will begin with Minnesota's led by head coach Cam Knowles. It's Pacheco, Lacey, Dunbar, a very dangerous trio up top. Bello, Bo, O'Driscoll in the midfield. Mosquera, Rodas, Uche, Marquez in front of Alex Smurr who is making his fourth start of the season, fourth start in a row, and he has not conceded a goal over any of the last three matches. Minnesota coming in on a streak of three consecutive clean sheets. For Real Monarchs, they are led by Hamasin Alave. It is Fernando Delgado in goal for them, making his eighth start of the season, which is the most on the team. The two Pierres are in front of him with Alba and Nigro. Iskandarian, Nyman, Wellings in the midfield. Jockison, Paul, and Vasquez up top for this Real Monarchs group that is looking to push its way up the Western Conference standings. Minnesota hoping to do the same thing as well. But if the season ended today, Minnesota would find itself in the final playoff spot. Real Monarchs needs to move up a few spots if they want to get into the postseason. Our head referee tonight is Deshaun Beard. AR1, Eric Del Rosario. AR2 is Jake Brochu. And the fourth official is John Krill. Very nice night, low 80s, no chance of rain here in Minnesota. A bit windy. But all things considered, a very nice night for this match. What's interesting is Real Monarchs have actually been better on the road this year. 4-4-0 four, four, and zero away from home. Just 1-5-2 and two at home. Minnesota 3-2-1 and one at home. 3-3-3 three, three, and three on the road. Minnesota in the all-gray home kits. It is the white road kits for Salt Lake here this evening. And we are underway. So glad you could be with us here on this Sunday evening from Minnesota. MNU FC2 coming off perhaps its best performance of the season. A 4-0 win against Portland. They were aided in that match by Portland taking a red card and they were a man up for quite a while, Minnesota was, but played very, very well and earned a very dominant three points last Sunday. Real Monarchs playing for the first time since last Friday, in which they earned a result against a very good Austin group, a 0-0 tie, and Austin earned the extra point in the shootout, took that four to three. Real Monarchs prior to that got a win at Portland 3-2. Minnesota, as we mentioned, in a very good run of form lately. Three consecutive clean sheets, a 2-0-1 record, and seven points out of those last three matches to move up a couple spots in the Western Conference table. And what's really impressive about the streak of clean sheets, as this is the first touch for Delgado, 
And what's really impressive for Minnesota is prior to the last three matches, this group had really been struggling keeping the ball out of their own net. In the prior six matches, Minnesota had allowed 21 goals. That is well over three goals per match. But zero allowed in the last three. And in talking with head coach Cameron Knowles this week, he said, you know, it really hasn't been one big thing that we've changed defensively. It's just a lot of little things that have added up. Some consistency among the back line. They've eliminated making big mistakes. Also, a lot of, uh, just a lot of consistent effort for 90 minutes. And Alex Smur, who as we said, has started the last three matches, has just been excellent in goal. Last season, Minnesota got a win and a tie against Salt Lake. So in three all-time meetings in MLS Next Pro, Salt Lake has never beaten Minnesota. Of course, not the biggest sample size in the world. We'll see if that changes here tonight. Salt Lake has at times struggled a bit to score goals this year. Only scored 16, which is 26th out of the 27 teams in the league. Uh, Smur will let this go over the end line and have a goal kick. And the Austin match last time out was the eighth time this season that Real Monarchs have not scored a goal in a match. So they look to be more dangerous here tonight. There was one late change in the starting 11 for Real Monarchs. Omar Alba, who has started 14 matches this year, was shaken up in warm-ups prior to the match. So Gabriel Oxenin will make his second start and appearance of the year, 94, who had just had the ball on his foot. He's played all the way back to Delgado and a bit of a mistake there. Zaydan Bello took the ball away but Monarchs able to recover and clear it down the pitch. By the way, in that 4-0 win last time out for Minnesota, three goals, a hat trick for Cameron Lacey, who has just been on a wonderful run of late. From the beginning of June until now, he has a brace, a hat trick, and a match in which he had a goal and an assist certainly made his claim to be the player of the month in the league. That ended up going to Nick Firmino from Atlanta, who is the current Golden Boot leader in MLS Next Pro. This played out to the wide side as Monarchs look to attack early. Dangerous ball comes in the box, and it's just wide from Bertin Jacquesson. It was deflected, though, so a corner coming for Salt Lake. Jock is on the first round pick by Salt Lake and the University of Pittsburgh and a wonderful opportunity here. And Jeremy Rodas was able to get his right foot on it or else that might have beaten Smear and been the first goal against Minnesota in a couple weeks. Either way, it does turn into a corner here for Salt Lake. Corner played short. Now the ball comes into Smear, who got a hand on it, trying to chase it down well off his line. He's in a dangerous situation here. Can Monarchs get one on target? They cannot. Good collective defending there from Minnesota, and it's cleared down the pitch. You know, Cameron Knowles did say in our conversation this week, although the defense has, of course, been much better, they don't want to get ahead of themselves and feel like everything is fixed. And he also pointed out that they have been a little lucky. There have been good opportunities for opposing teams to score, and they just haven't. Count those two opportunities there as good chances that Salt Lake did not take advantage of. Pacheco sends one in front. Rory O'Driscoll a bit heavy on the first touch. Still in a dangerous area and headed just wide by Lacey. 
Good build up there for Minnesota. Started with Diogo Pacheco and nearly ended in a goal for Minnesota. Pacheco for O'Driscoll, back to Pacheco. And a man who's coming off a hat trick, had a good look there, couldn't quite put it on target. So an entertaining first six and a half minutes at the National Sports Center. But we remain level 0-0. Second meeting of the year between these two. Coach Cameron Knowles said, yeah, it's nice that we can have a memory of a good result last time against Real Monarchs, but because of the conditions and the fact that it was nearly three months ago, or actually nearly four months ago, and both teams have changed so much since then, other than the positive memory, that match doesn't have a lot of relation to this one. Said he and his staff were considering how much film should we show the team this week and settled on probably not that much with a lot changing since that point. Think about the fact that Real Monarchs as a group entering play tonight have used 43 players at least once in a match this season, which is likely the most in the league. Team that's had a lot of turnover, but many of their players that eat up the bulk of the minutes played this year are playing tonight and starting tonight. Now, of course, Alba, who is a usual starter, not available because of being shaken up in warm-ups. Luis Rivera and Teron Williams as well, who do get a lot of minutes and score a lot of goals for this Salt Lake group also not available this evening. This is Cedric Ball. It goes over the sideline for a throw for the visitors. Minnesota paired with the defensive turnaround the last couple weeks. Still very dangerous scoring. Fourth in the league out of the 27 teams in goals scored entering the weekend with 32. And of course, four of the, those coming last time out against Portland. Good recovery defensively there by Juan Mosquera. It will be a throw though for Salt Lake. And it'll be Oxen in to take it. Trying to get it into the deep corner in the attacking third. And now another throw for Salt Lake. And offside here as the flag comes up. Last year was a bit of a difficult one for Real Monarchs, just 23 points, which put them 10th in the Western Conference. Right now they are in that 11th place spot, but at 18 points, they're close to already surpassing that total. Clearly an improved group this year. Minnesota missed out on the playoffs last year, tied for eighth with 31 points, a nine, 12, and three record. And Cameron Knowles said, without hesitation, the goal for this group is the playoffs this year. They feel like they can get there, and they certainly will if they continue to play in the form they have been lately. Here's O'Driscoll with a little bit of split space, flips it inside the box, but Salt Lake handles it well and is able to clear it out of trouble. Couple players take a tumble there, ends up simply being over the sideline. And Jacasson will retreat here. Here's a giveaway and an opportunity. Cameron Dunbar just wide. Some sloppy play in their own defensive third from Salt Lake set up this opportunity for Cameron Dunbar. He had Delgado beat, but couldn't quite 
putting it on target. Count that as an opportunity Dunbar, you would think, would love to have back, playing for the fifth time this year with MNU FC2. And was searching for his third goal there. Dunbar, a guy that Cameron Knowles pointed out multiple times actually this year when I've had the chance to chat with him as somebody who has asked the organization to come play with MNU FC2 when the minutes with the first team for him have not been there. Coach Knowles has consistently said that he just loves the culture that the organization has and how many first team guys have not only been happy to, but even asked to come play with this group. Off the free kick, Salt Lake got the first touch on it. And they're able to get out of trouble. Couple sloppy plays though. For Real Monarchs in their own end, something to watch out for, it hasn't cost them yet. But if they continue to hand Minnesota opportunities, it might be a long night for the visitors. Just over 12 and a half minutes gone by here at the National Sports Center in Blaine, Minnesota. This facility has a dome on it throughout the winter. So because of that, Minnesota had to play its first six matches of the year on the road, and now they're getting the payoff in the other direction for that. Five out of six at home is the stretch at the moment. And Cameron Knowles said, you know, it's not all bad being on the road. It's not all good being at home. It's certainly nice to have the routine of being at home. But with a young group being on the road that much to start the season, it forced them to bond with one another. And he feels like at this point in the year, as we get towards the middle of July, it has really paid off for them. Corner coming here for Minnesota. First of the night. In swinging balls, a good one, but service is headed away. Almost 14 minutes gone by in this first half. Justin Galanti and our entire outstanding crew. Glad you're with us here on MLSNextPro.com. Mikael Marquez, the 21-year-old, playing his fourth match this year, took the throw, trying to make a run into the box there. He's being shielded off and gets called for the foul. Well done defensively there by Real Monarchs once again. You can see the trees and the flag certainly being affected by what is a stiff wind at the moment here in Minnesota. As always, a busy Sunday around MLS Next Pro. Already one match has gone final. Crown Legacy picks up three points once again, continuing to play very well. A 3-1 win over Atlanta United too. Already we have had three matches this week prior to today, two on Friday and one on Saturday. Friday night, Columbus a 3-2 winner against Toronto. Austin a 3-0 winner against Houston. And last night, a 1-1 tie between Colorado and Vancouver. And Colorado was able to take the extra point in the shootout. Other than ours, there are four matches going on at the moment. Second half between Chicago and Cincinnati. No goals yet there. This will be a corner coming up for Real Monarchs. No goals yet between Miami and New England. That match is at halftime. And then early in the first half, Red Bulls and NYCFC in the New York City Derby are scoreless. And Orlando City has an early goal against Huntsville. They are in the 15th minute.
Service, first touch by Mosquera for Minnesota. Way up in the air, not definitively cleared yet, but not many bodies near the ball for Salt Lake at the moment. Where will it come down? Jude Wellings tried to make his way through a couple defenders. Instead, Minnesota comes away with it, trying to find Pacheco down the field. But it's Delgado who comes out to send it over the sideline. Diogo Pacheco, the leading goal scorer this year for Minnesota. Seven goals, also leads the team with four assists. And a wonderful leader for this group. 24-year-old. Had three goals and five assists in 21 matches last year for MNU FC2. Cameron Knowles said, you know, last season we were really looking for some more leadership out of the group. And Pacheco has stepped up into that role, especially with Jason Ramos, who had an ACL injury last year, having not played in a match until last weekend. Pacheco, a guy who Coach Knowles said not only leads with his play and his voice but leads by example as well and he feels very fortunate to have Pacheco in his locker last week Diogo did a wonderful sit down with the league talked about his battle with cancer prior to his freshman year of college at Akron a really inspiring story came right when he's on his way out to Ohio to begin college was able to beat it and now excelling in his professional career a few, a few years later. And that life experience so valuable for him. Here's a great chance for Minnesota. A save made, rebound is loose, it's stopped again. Dunbar trying to get one through, he can't. Comes down near Pacheco, back out. Shot gets blocked again, this time from Cedric Bowe. And it looks like Salt Lake has averted a disaster. What a stop by Fernando Delgado to keep this match scoreless. Cameron Dunbar has had some great chances already. None better than this. Two opportunities there. And somehow we remain 0-0. Great work by not only Delgado, but also the back line for Salt Lake. Delgado, the 16-year-old out of the RSL Academy. He's been in the Academy since 2020, making his eighth start of the year today, which is the most on the team. Blake Kelly has five behind him. Two clean sheets this season, one in April, one in late May for Fernando Delgado. Approaching the 20 minute mark and a foul here against Minnesota. One thing Cameron Knowles pointed out is that there are going to be some things changing with this roster. Not different than pretty much every other team in the league, but some significant changes coming for Minnesota with some of their key guys. Jeremy Rodas as well as Juan Mosquera have loans expiring at the end of the month. So we'll see what happens there. Emmanuel Iwe just signed a first team contract. Here's a chance and an easy stop for Alex Smur on Daron Iskandarian. So Iwe's usage with MNU FC2 likely not going to be as much as it has been. He has made 12 starts this year and Guy like Carlos Leatherman will shortly be leaving for college at St. Louis. Another chance at this look for Iskandarian. Likely hope to do more with that effort, but Smur gets the save. First shot on goal tonight there for the visitors. Jacasson sends one into the box and it is cleared away. 
Fans, tonight's broadcast is presented by Alina Health, official health care provider of MNU FC2. Good chances already. Five shots, two on target for Minnesota. We remain at 0 0. Jude Wellings moving forward with it. Sent into the box, and Smar had to get a diving hand on it to avoid an own goal. This pass was off of CC Uche, and it looked like it was directed on target. And Alex Smur will not get credited with a save, but he keeps this match level. Results in the third corner of the night for the visitors. And once again defended well by Minnesota. Jacqueson in the middle for Paul. A little bit of space now for Iskandarian. Now Moses Nyman. Good build up here for Salt Lake as they establish some possession here. Not many bodies in the box and Jacques Casson couldn't quite control it. And Minnesota gets the throw here. Entertaining match so far. Sort of expected a good amount of scoring this evening. And despite the 0-0 numbers on the scoreboard at the moment, not due to a lack of opportunities really on either side. Job to get out of trouble there by Mosquera, and Jeremy Rodas takes it. Rodas on loan from his club in Honduras. Mosquera from his club in Colombia. Both of those loans ending at the end of the month. Here's Dunbar once again, who's had a bunch of good chances so far. He is electric with the ball on his foot, sends this all the way in, comes to Delgado. Minnesota at the moment sitting in the final playoff spot in the Western Conference table. Salt Lake, which has been playing better of late, still in 11th place entering the weekend. Here's a giveaway, Dunbar couldn't put it anywhere in the open goal. It ends up right with Delgado. That is the third time that Salt Lake has simply given the ball away and set up a golden scoring chance for Minnesota. And they have not been able to take advantage yet. And Dunbar probably feels like he should have at least two goals already tonight. Transition back the other way, it's Oxenin. Gets around Pacheco. Oxenin cross in front and Smur takes it. Now Minnesota tries to start the break back the other way and Cedric Bone will slow things up. High-paced action here at the National Sports Center. Dunbar trying to get through a couple of defenders. Bo moving forward for this, ends up with Diogo Pacheco. Fancy move to send that ball towards some open space. Lacey was asking for a foul. Instead, it will be a Minnesota throw with 26 minutes gone in the first half. And now a throw for Salt Lake. Some incredible chances for Minnesota so far. 
But we remain 0-0. Zero, zero. Zaydan Bello leaves it back for Ball. Driscoll, former New Hampshire Wildcat, fighting for position and draws the foul call. Four years at the University of New Hampshire for O'Driscoll before signing with MNUFC2. Long passes on a really windy night can be a little difficult to control. You can see the flag in the corner there. Actually got blown over by the wind. Good connection here. Jock Isson moving forward with it. Searching for an outlet. And it's cleared away. Shots are 6-3 in Minnesota's favor. 2-1 on target for the home side. Iskandarian to Jock Isson, who has plenty of room here. Cross bouncing in on Smur, who handles it cleanly. Driscoll knocked down. And has to adjust that right boot. There's Jeremy Rodas. Nearly a giveaway. And Rodas plays it back to Smur. Alex Smur, 24 years old, played eight matches last year with this group. Didn't play this year until the June 18th match against Vancouver. He has started now four in a row, first three all clean sheets. He is hoping that continues tonight. Smur back in 2022 was the 62nd overall pick in the MLS Super Draft out of the University of North Carolina. This year was loaned to Colorado Springs in the USL Championship at the start of the year, but was recalled after just one appearance. Fred Emmings, the 19-year-old, has started the other 12 matches for Minnesota this season. Dunbar takes the ball here for Minnesota. And Bello gives it back to him. Pacheco trying to run under this one. Good recovery defensively by Oxenen. Pacheco, such a dangerous player who can strike at any time. Diogo had a brace in that season opener against Salt Lake. Having an opportunity here, and Delgado stops it. Not sure it was going to be on target, but might as well make the stop if you can if you're the 16-year-old goalkeeper, Fernando Delgado. Comes back to Pacheco here. To the top for O'Driscoll. Couldn't quite get the strike on that one he wanted. Five matches going on right now around MLS Next Pro. All five are level at the moment. Chicago, Cincinnati, Miami, New England, Huntsville, Orlando, New York Red Bull, and New York City, and of course ours as well. Still four more matches tonight that have yet to get underway. Oh, 
This is Elijah Paul, tied for the team lead with three goals this year, and he wins a corner. Or he thought he won a corner, but instead, Deshaun Beard says he had the last touch, so a goal kick for Smurf. An interesting point that Cameron Knowles made in our talk this week was about reminding the guys how important each and every single match is because at the start of the year, you know, you have so many matches on the schedule, you feel like you have so many opportunities to get wins and pick up points, and those go away so quickly. And you need to recognize that three points in April, three points in July, three points in August, it's all the same. Three points are three points, and you don't want to put yourself in a position where Minnesota was last year where you're going into the final three or four matches needing to win every one to get in the playoffs. You want to take care of your business now and put yourself in a real good spot when the end of the season comes. And right now, the way Minnesota is playing, certainly not an opponent that anyone wants to see. In these couple weeks of real opportunity, for Minnesota to continue moving up the Western Conference table. A couple matches in a row against teams that sit outside the playoff picture in the Western Conference at the moment. Portland at home last time out, Salt Lake tonight at home, and then next weekend home for LAFC. Dunbar gets this forward, Cameron Lacey, flag is up, offside. Looked like it was going to be a good chance, but Lacey couldn't quite hold up his run. And the man who had the hat trick last weekend missed anyway. So we remain at 0-0. Possession very close at the moment. About 51-49 in favor of Salt Lake. Ball played to a lot of open space and it goes over the sideline untouched. So a Minnesota throw up coming. It looks like Smur will come all the way out and take it. It was actually a foul that was called against Salt Lake, so that's why Smur is out here. Checo trying to run this one down. In the foot race with Oxenin. And Pacheco has it on his foot. Trying to get through a couple defenders. Couldn't quite keep control of the ball. And that deflected off him. So a goal kick for Delgado. Amason Alave, the head coach for Real Monarchs, has been on the RSL staff in one way or another. Since 2017, played 16 professional season, including a handful of those with Real Salt Lake. Big part of this organization for a long time now. Jacasson took a little contact, did as well as he could to hold the ball for as long as he could. Eventually, Minnesota able to take it. Now seven shots to three in Minnesota's favor. Smur comes out and punches that away. And what do we have here? A penalty on Minnesota. How about that? It'll be a PK for Salt Lake. Let's see where this foul comes. Smur coming out, and yeah, it's a good call. Marquez gave the shove in the back to Iskandarian. And a PK now for Salt Lake. And a chance to end this run of clean sheets 
That is that three consecutive matches plus 36 plus minutes tonight for Minnesota. It'll be Elijah Paul, the 20 year old, to take it. Seventh overall pick in the most recent MLS Super Draft out of the University of Washington, where he was the 2022 Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year. So it's Paul against Smur here. What a chance for Salt Lake. Wind blows the ball off the spot there. So Paul has to place it back. Going directly into the wind here, which is obviously significant. Elijah Paul beats Smur. One nil, Real Monarchs. So that ends the shutout streak for Minnesota. And it's Paul's team leading fourth goal of the season. And this is sixth match. Smur guessed to his right. And Paul went right down the middle. One nil for the visitors. What a turn of events there. How many chances in this first half does Minnesota likely feel like it should have taken advantage of. And instead on a seemingly harmless service into the box, they take a penalty and find themselves behind a goal late in the first half. Cedric Bow, good play to win the ball here. Finds Pacheco, a quick answer perhaps, but the cross was behind Dunbar. Minnesota there was hoping for a quick answer. But instead, simply a throw for Salt Lake. Driscoll hustled to keep that in play. But Gennaro Nigro took it, wearing the captain's armband for Salt Lake. And here come the visitors on the counter attack. 40th minute here. And a foul against Pacheco, taking down Gabriel Oxenin. And a yellow is shown to the Minnesota captain. First yellow is shown on either side tonight. As Pacheco takes it. Cameron Knowles was not quite sure about Pacheco's availability tonight. Had some nagging injuries, but of course he is in the starting lineup. Obviously not really a player that Minnesota can afford to be without, not only because of his production, but also the leadership. 15th appearance, 10th start of the year for Diogo Pacheco. Rodas back for Smur. A throw for Minnesota. Trying to find an equalizer late in the first half. After conceding the goal on the PK in the 38th minute. Elijah Paul's fourth goal of the season. You know, we mentioned earlier the significant turnover in the roster throughout the year for Salt Lake. It's not 
simply the fact that they've used a lot of players and it's sort of mixing and matching the reserves they come off the bench. 43 players used entering tonight through the first 16 matches of the year. But 36 different players have started a match for Salt Lake. Foul here against Minnesota. Jacquesson still down as we restart play. Excuse me, that was Paul that's down. Jacquesson feeds it towards the middle. Iskandarian. Oxenin. Good work defensively there. Lacey was trying to run this down. Well played though by Delgado. Tireless effort is what Cameron Lacey gives his head coach, Cameron Knoll said. He said it's his hard work that allows him to be in so many positions to score so many goals. And here we'll have a yellow shown to Bobby Pierre, who cannot believe Deshaun Beard just showed him a yellow. yellow card caution issued to Real not only did he not feel that was worthy of a card, I think he thought the foul should have gone the other way. The other way. He got run into and then he pulled Cedric Bowe down with him. And it results in a free kick for Minnesota. Mario Driscoll takes this. Driscoll, a bending ball into the box, and it will be a goal kick, actually offside, as the flag is up against Minnesota. Entertaining first half here at the National Sports Center. Justin Galanti and our entire crew, so glad you're spending some of your Sunday evening with us. Beautiful night in Minnesota. And now foul against Nigro. And Salt Lake continues to protest these calls. Jude Welling showed a yellow there. Wellings, the 17 year old, continues to voice his displeasure as we get towards first half stoppage time. It looked like. Deshaun Beard, the referee, just gave the universal signal for enough. Oscara working his way through a couple defenders. No word yet on how much time we'll have added. Salt Lake up 1-0 on the 38th minute. Goal on the PK from Paul. And a goal kick coming for Fernando Delgado, who's had two saves that he's had to make in this first half. It'll be a minimum of four minutes of added time here in the first half. Sends this high up into the air. Ends up with a throw for Real Monarchs. It's 
Certainly a half where you feel like Minnesota likely wants some of the chances it got back. But overall, pretty even play. Here's Cameron Lacey trying to stay on that ball. Keeps it in play, but it's taken by Nigro. O'Driscoll tries to switch the field. Pacheco couldn't stop that ball. Eventually able to keep it in play though, deep in the corner. And this will be a corner for Minnesota. Just over two minutes of stoppage time gone by. Really entertaining first half. 20-year-old Cameron Dunbar to take this. And a bit too strong on that service. CC Uche couldn't get it redirected towards the target or a teammate. These teams coming into play tonight on short, unbeaten streaks. Two matches in a row unbeaten for Salt Lake, three in a row for Minnesota, who has seen its three match shutout streak snapped tonight. But certainly plenty of time left to change the current result. Mario Driscoll called for the foul. And now it's Minnesota's turn to be unhappy with the call. And now a yellow is shown to Dunbar. Likely for too much complaining to Deshaun Beard. Yellow card caution issued in a UFC 2's number 23, Cameron Dunbar in the 45th plus minute. See how much time past 49 we go. Four minutes of added time gone by. Smur got a punch on it, he's out of position. And a foul here against Cedric Bow. And a great chance here for a late free kick for Salt Lake. Another ball that seemed like it might not be that big a deal, but Paul was running under it. Smur had to come punch it out, uh, and on the recovery, Bo ran right into Iskandarian. And luckily for Minnesota, it's just outside the 18-yard 18 18-yard 18 mark. Player is still down, though, here for Salt Lake. See if he can get up prior to this free kick. Cameron Lacey getting his nose in the middle of a couple of Salt Lake players. It was Elijah Paul who was on the pitch and he is up, but you can see still holding his back a bit. So this will likely be the last action of the first half. Can Salt Lake capitalize and take a two goal advantage into the break? Jacasson will be the one to take this for Salt Lake. As Deshaun Beard continues to try and get things organized. Jacasson walks it off. Jacasson sends it well high. And there's halftime. So the goal on the PK in the 38th minute from Elijah Paul is all in the first half and Rayon Monarchs takes 
a 1-0 lead into the break at the National Sports Center in Minnesota. Fans, the classic fan favorite from 2001, Goalie Wars, is back. At the MLS All-Star Skills Challenge presented by AT&T 5G on Tuesday, July 18th, four MLS Next Pro goalkeepers will face off in a head-to-head -head single elimination tournament. In each 90-second round, goalies must defend their net while trying to score on the opponent by kick, throw, or drop kick. You won't want to miss it. Here are the goalkeepers selected for the action. Shaking hands, and it starts first. Goes for the yard. Look at Zach. A special save for Damian Loss. He gets the dummy, the look, no look. Carvalho, Carvalho cannot get it past Martino, who gets a second save. Sliding it through, Osorio. Oh, it falls here for Nessie. Halftime in Minnesota and a 1-0 lead for Salt Lake over Minnesota. One team scored a season best seven goals. Two matches went nil-nil. We saw lots of weather delays and one match that went to round 10 in the shootout. Plus an MLS signing milestone. Just a typical week in MLS Next Pro. Michelle and Samara have it all in the Match Day Rewind. Match Day 15 gave us more than we could even ask for. Samara and I are here with the biggest moments from this week in MLS Next Pro. One of the most noteworthy moments was a new record being set for most goal scorers in a single match. Sporting KC2 had seven players scoring a goal in their 7-1 wipeout over Whitecaps FC2, also setting the highest goal scoring total in the 2023 MLS Next Pro campaign to date. There were so many goals that the feat caught coach Benny Fellhaver by surprise. He did have a favorite one though. I actually didn't even realize that. Um, I'll, I guess I'll take the uh, the Draper goal. I think it was the last goal was really, really good where we, we had pretty high press. I think that was in you, you, maybe 80th minute, 85th minute, uh, late in the game where we, we pressed them, we created an opportunity to steal it. Lucas read it really well and then was able to kind of scoot around a couple of guys and, and deliver a really good cross to the back post where we had the opposite winger making that run, which we talk about in training. So. Um, one of my favorites, I can't remember, I'll hold them right now. And while there weren't nearly as many goals, the lone one in Rapids two game against St. Louis City two was just as meaningful. After being sidelined by injury on May 31st, Remy Cabral made his super sub hero return, scoring the only goal of the game to keep Rapids two perfect on the road. In the 81st minute, Cabral broke the deadlock off a perfect pass from Yosuke Hanya earning his fifth goal of the season and proving his time away didn't slow down his ability to find the back of the net. Speaking of meaningful goals, Crown Legacy FC's Joao Pedro had one of his own. The 20-year-old lifted his team to a stoppage time victory thanks to a very well-taken penalty kick, which happened to be his first goal of the season. Pedro also came in clutch, delivering an assist to teammate David Pareba for the equalizer. The comeback win keeps the North Carolina team in control of the East for another week. And in addition to all the action on the field, MLS Next Pro reached a milestone off of it. Vancouver Whitecaps signing of Levante Johnson to a first team contract marked the 50th MLS Next Pro player to sign with their first team. Just a year and a half into the league's existence, and the pathway to pro is alive and well. From the very first, Noah Allen signing with Inter Miami on March 11th of last year, to Johnson marking us halfway to 100, things are only getting started. With July coming in on a hot start, we can't wait to see what Match Day 15 brings. We'll see you back here next weekend with everything that stood out.
It's halftime in Minnesota. A 1-0 lead at the break for Real Monarchs over Minnesota United 2. Earlier in the season, Minnesota went to Salt Lake, got a 3-0 win. Real Monarchs hoping to return the favor tonight. One player had a hat trick and one team had five assists. What were the week's best performances? We head to the spotlight to find out. Match day 15 saw another very deserving group of guys take the spotlight, starting with your MLS Next Rising star, Union 2's Luciano Sanchez. The 18-year-old's game-clenching goal took place just 26 minutes into his appearance off the bench. Thanks to a heads-up pass by Bubakar Diallo, Sanchez was led to a 1v1 situation, outmaneuvered an oncoming defender, and then slipped the ball past the keeper for Union 2's third goal of the match. It also marked his third goal of the season and his first Rising Star honor. For Minnesota United FC 2's Cameron Lacey, a first professional hat trick will do the trick to earn him his first MLS Next Pro Player of the Week honor. The 22-year-old striker's first goal came by way of PK in stoppage time of the first half before he went on to earn a brace in the second. In one match, he doubled his goal total for the year and helped his team return the favor to Timbers 2, who just put four on them to open June. But according to the hat trick hero, this performance is only going to propel them further. And, um, the sky's the limit for this group. It's, it's a super talented group, super talented coaching staff, and super talented club. So the, the, this club uh, can go to the sky. The sky's the limit. Well, if the sky's the limit for them, the top corner of the box is the limit for Charlie Ostrom's best goal of match day 15. The fire two forward with a one touch bender as a defender came on, sailed this one to the top right corner of the box. It not only earned him best goal of the match day, it also marked a brace performance for the 23 year old, helping Fire 2 and Crew 2's four game unbeaten streak and handing them their second two goal defeat in just as many matchups. And rounding us out for match day 15, the team honor could really only go to one group, Sporting Kansas City 2. The team's seven different goal scorers were helped out by five assists. That also marks the most by a single team on the match day. The offensive output helped SKC2 top the leader of the Pacific Division and moves them into a tie for fifth alongside Orlando City B and Union 2 for most goals on the season with 30. Each week, these guys give us spotlight-worthy performances. Can't wait to see what they do for Match Day 16. Great look back at last week. A lot of great performances, and we'll see if we get more. I'm sure we will this week around MLS Next Pro. Next week, we will see the debut of the MLS Next Pro version of El Trafico. Nicole Beckelman has more. One of the most heated rivalries in Major League Soccer is making its way to MLS Next Pro. Players, coaches, and fans from each organization understand the significance of coming out victorious in this match. On July 12th, LAFC 2 and LA Galaxy 2 will clash in MLS Next Pro's first ever edition of El Trafico. The second goal for LA. Now a shot to the R level. Long attempt. Oh my. Male beat blocked it home. Just possessed. It's a chance and it's a goal. So, Adam, you grew up in LA. You're quite familiar with the rivalry between these two teams. How would you describe El Trafico? It's the biggest rivalry there is in Major League Soccer. Every game between the two is just a huge battle from the U12s all the way to the senior team. From inside, it's, it's, it's a special game. Uh, they are here to take what we have. We won five championships. So it's a special game. It's different. It doesn't matter the position that you are. If you're in first place, last place, 
these those games are the games that you don't want to lose. It has been always like a very important game, not only for the for the players, for the organization, mm -hmm. and it's something when we can just see that rivalry that we built like in a, at the beginning of the of the club in 2018, that is growing and growing and growing. No, at the end, I think that is very good for the for the game. It's very good for the for the city, and I think that at the end, it's also very good for the players that have the opportunity to experience a really big game here in LA. We got two teams in one city competing, wanting to be crowned the best team in LA. It doesn't get any bigger than that. Marty throwing his body in, it's gonna fall for Ibra. Oh, come on! Come on! When you step out on that pitch on July 12th, what are you gonna bring to help your team win this thing? For sure, more fire than any game before. Fierceness and just give it all. Give it all on the pitch that day. We're a lot stronger together. Um, there's a saying that goes, uh, alone you go faster, but together you go further. And I believe that if we play together as a team and everyone does their job, we could come out winning this thing. you played in a lot of rivalry games, but why is this match different? I think it's the first game, uh, the first time, uh, the first time, the last time, it's all we stay for a history, if we can say it like that. It's the, the team that's going to win, the guy that's going to score the first goal in the MLS next pro, El Trafico. Maybe it's the first PK save. All these, it's, it's a start, it stays for the history. I think the players have a chance to do it. And maybe in 10 years, we're going to go back to the first El Trafico, these players score that goal so they can have their name in the history of, of the soccer or the traffic, so it's important, it's good, and they have to understand that. We were just a new uh, team uh, stepping into their territory. I think that is making it a bit special too, okay? Because we have always that desire just to, to win, but also to compete and to show them that right now we are just coming, just not only just for a, for a few months, we are coming here just to stay. Oh my goodness, LAFC2 comes up with a moment of brilliance. You actually played in an El Trafico match in 2021. Give me all the details of you know, that moment in your career. It was a surreal moment. It was kind of a pinch me moment, you know? Like, you don't really think about these moments when you're living it. It kind of becomes normal to us because we do this every single day. But like, once you like sit down and really think about it, it's just crazy, you know? Like, I remember after the game, uh, one of my boys called me and he was like, Bro, you literally just got subbed off by El Trafico. Like, how do you feel? And I was just like, bro, like, it's crazy, you know? But it was just a dream come true. I was, I'm blessed and thank God, you know, it happened here in front of my family and my friends, you know? I've only played against the Galaxy twice. Once my U17 season, which I was dropped down for, and then obviously I played in the Open Cup against the first team. And just every game I'm willing to so let's say um, die on the pitch for just to get that dub. What would winning this match mean to you? Winning this match would mean a lot to not just me, but to, to all the fans and all the supporters and all the people that believe in us. It's more than just positions and and standings in this league. It's it's between us two, the team. I want to go home feeling like we did something good, you know, and make everybody proud of us. And I want to make every ex-Galaxy fan uh, feel that they made the wrong decision by cho choosing our rival. It's just a huge rivalry, so I think winning in no matter age, whichever age group is just super important. You now I'm ready to win and ready to do whatever it takes to, to come out on top. You have to die for this badge and you have to die for the city and we have to win the game. Welcome back to the National Sports Center in Blaine, Minnesota. About to start the second half, but first let's look back at the highlights from half number one, where chances were aplenty on both sides. Early in the first half, a giveaway. Cameron Dunbar found himself free, but couldn't quite put it on target. This is Dunbar a couple minutes later. Great save by Fernando Delgado. Couple more swings at it, couldn't get a shot through, and eventually Salt Lake was able to clear it out of trouble. Later on in that first half, good opportunity here for Daron Iskandarian, but Alex Smur able to make the stop. 
And this was the turning point in the first half. A seemingly innocent ball sent into the box. Mikael Marquez commits the foul, and Elijah Paul puts away the PK for the lone goal of that first half. So a 1-0 lead as we start the second for Salt Lake. The visitors had just about 52% of possession in that first half. Minnesota had an 8-5 shots advantage. Each team with two shots on goal. And as you saw from those highlights, certainly there could have been more goals in that first half. So we will see if the second half produces more goals. One sub at halftime for Minnesota. Molik Khan, the 19-year-old, will make his 12th appearance of the year. He comes on, replacing Cedric Bowe. That's the only sub for either side at halftime. So Molik Jesse Khan comes on. Played five matches last year. And again, this is 12th this year. Two goals this season. Both of them coming in May. One against Chicago and one against Tacoma. Here comes Salt Lake. Dangerous chance. Smur made the stop. Rebound is loose and it's put in. 2-0 Real Monarchs. Daron Iskandarian, second goal of the year. Less than a minute out of halftime. And Salt Lake has doubled its lead. Smur made an incredible stop on the first shot, but Iskandarian cleans up the loose change. And the 21-year-old makes it 2-0. How about that? And these Minnesota players have to be looking at each other, wondering how they're down a pair of goals right now. But give all the credit in the world to the visitors tonight. We mentioned early in this match that Salt Lake has been much better on the road than at home. In fact, they've been really solid on the road. 4-4-0 away from home. Just one five and two at home. Now a two nil lead in Minnesota very early on in the second half. What will the response be from Minnesota? It's always interesting when you spend all that time during halftime putting together your game plan for being down one nil and Second half starts, takes about 45 seconds, and now you're down by two and you have to adjust some things. A foul here against Real Monarchs. And a free kick upcoming for Minnesota. Yellow card shown. Actually, yellow cards for two players there. Jacqueson for Real Monarchs and Mosquera for Minnesota. So, certainly at the end of the first half and now the start of the second, feels like Deshaun Beard is trying to keep control of this match as it's gotten a little bit physical. So after Deshaun Beard writes everything in his book, Ready for this free kick now. Pacheco will take it. 
Service is a low bounding ball into the box and cleared away by Iskandarian. Still a throw for Minnesota here. Good step back by Mosquera, but couldn't keep the ball in play. See how aggressive Salt Lake is here. Obviously, tons of time to go, but now up by two instead of one. See if they sit back and defend it all. Two goals at this point has to be such a welcome sight for Hamasin Alave and his staff. As we mentioned earlier, this group has struggled to score goals this year. Just 16 of them in 16 matches entering play tonight. And five of those came in a single match against Portland back in April. Did not score in a 0-0 tie last time against Austin. But this is a third consecutive really strong performance from Salt Lake. Trying to add to it here. Julian Vasquez couldn't get a shot through. Salt Lake keeping the ball. And now a whistle as a player is down for Minnesota. And good to see Mosquera back to his feet pretty quickly. Follow this league closely. You know matches can change quite a bit very quickly. So don't even come close to counting this one is over at 2 0 at the 51 minute mark. This is Jude Wellings for Nigro. Nigro gets it back, tries to cross, and earns a corner as Marquez had the last touch on it. Really impressive stuff at a halftime so far for Salt Lake. Moses Nyman will take this corner. Fourth of the night for Real Monarchs. It's a pretty good service and a foul goes against the visitors. Looks like Wellings gave a push in the back there. And now Smur restarted a little too quickly. Looking around the league, one match that we talked about earlier has gone final. Chicago and Cincinnati play to a nil-nil draw, and Cincinnati earns the extra point in the shootout. So two points tonight for Cincinnati. New England up one nil in the 81st minute against Miami. Huntsville has opened up a 4-1 lead fairly early in the second half against Orlando City. New York City FC, a 1-0 lead early in the second half against New York Red Bulls. And then early on in the first half, LA Galaxy and St. Louis, 0-0. And also early in the first half, LA FC, 1-0 over San Jose. Crown Legacy already a 3-1 winner today against Atlanta. And then two more matches tonight. Portland and Kansas City, as well as Tacoma and North Texas. Those two matches will start in about 40 minutes and then about an hour and 40 minutes, respectively. If you're just joining us, it was Elijah Paul on a PK in the 38th minute. That gave Salt Lake the lead, and then right at a halftime, Iskandarian added a second. 
There's Mikael Marquez. Little fake and gives it off for O'Driscoll. He'll walk forward with it. Mario Driscoll gets it through. Dunbar just a bit heavy on the first touch. Dunbar has found himself in some very dangerous areas tonight, but has not quite been able to finish yet. It was a great run by O'Driscoll, and it looked like Nyman might have gotten his foot in there to prevent it from getting to Dunbar. Julian Vasquez. Nigro, cross comes in. Pretty good ball. Elijah Paul recovers for it. Jockey's son trying to get back to the middle, but it's taken from him. Excellent defending by Cameron, or I should say Juan Mosquera. Here comes Pacheco. Trying to get himself involved tonight. Diogo Pacheco still on the ball. Pacheco tripped up. But we play on. Minnesota appealing for a penalty there, but no call. Jude Wellings for Nigro. Minnesota able to take it back. Bellow couldn't keep the ball. Vasquez with some speed. Julian Vasquez cross in front, and it's just behind Jacquesson. Great run by Vasquez, just couldn't quite connect with Jacquesson. Almost a golden chance to make it three for Salt Lake. Pace is starting to get turned up here. Pacheco trying to find Dunbar. There is a trailing player, it's Lacey. Body down in the box. And this is deflected over the sideline. And what do we have here? Everybody's got their hands up, asking what the call's gonna be. Simply a throw coming for Minnesota. Both players wanted a foul there as Nigro and Dunbar kind of ran into each other. Cross is handled easily. A misplay and perhaps a chance to run for Salt Lake. Jockey Son leaves it for Paul, who has a goal tonight. Back for Jockey Son, a little room to operate. Bodies go down, we play on as this is getting a little sloppy here. And Welling sends it wide. Chances of plenty on both sides. 58th minute here at the National Sports Center in Blaine, Minnesota. Justin Galanti, our whole crew, so glad to be with you this evening. Could be a really important three points on the road for Salt Lake tonight. Sitting outside the playoff picture at the moment. Dangerous ball here. At the last minute, it's cleared away as Delgado found himself a bit out of position off his line. Salt Lake, 11th place in the West entering the weekend, but not quite out of it. Actually, not close to out of it in terms of trying to get up to a playoff spot. They would of course have to have a, a bunch of good results down the stretch here, but certainly an opportunity to do so if they continue in their current form. The live table right now, a win would get Salt Lake up to 21 points, which would put them only two points out of a playoff spot. The only issue would be there are four teams in between them and that last playoff spot. Still a long way to go though in the regular season. 
Second and final meeting between these two sides here this evening. Back on opening night, March 24th, a 3-0 win in Salt Lake for Minnesota. Tonight, the scene has shifted to Minnesota and the team that is well ahead has shifted as well. Here is Wellings. That'll be a throw for Minnesota. Foul there against Looks like D-Lens Pierre was the one who was called for it. 22 for Salt Lake. 22-year-old who has been part of this organization since 2015 when he started in the RSL Academy. Played collegiately at Portland. And now in his first year playing for Real Monarchs. Now foul here against Minnesota. A lot of fouls in this second half. A lot of players down on the turf. Paul trying to run this down and does. Elijah Paul had the first half goal. And this will go over the end line. It'll be a corner. Last touched by Rodas. Seems like the team with the extra spark at the moment is Salt Lake. Of course, easier to have when you're up a pair of goals on the road. Service toward the back post, headed back towards the target by Jacques Son, but cleared away by the Minnesota back line. Seems like both teams are sort of testing from a physical standpoint how much they can get away with. But Deshaun Beard has done a really good job keeping control of this one. Dunbar tried to play it to open space. It ends up with Pacheco. Diogo Pacheco fires wide. Good chance there for one of the leading goal scorers in the league. Good job to get it to the open area. Bit of a misplay there by Oxenin. And Pacheco just misses outside the near post. 63rd minute now and a 2-0 advantage for Salt Lake on the road. Wellings. And Dunbar able to recover here. Zidane Bello, a nice play to turn with it. But sent it a bit too far for any of his teammates to get to.
Paul sends this out wide. Another chance perhaps for Salt Lake. Wellings couldn't get on top of that ball. Minnesota able to clear it. Good recovery there by Pacheco. Have not said Fernando Delgado's name much. The goalkeeper for Salt Lake in this second half. Visitors have done a good job keeping the ball away from him. here against Wellings will send it back the other way. Wellings didn't like that call. Remember, he is one of a handful of players who is playing on a yellow right now. Shots are 10-10, 4-2 in favor of Salt Lake in terms of shots on target. There was only one sub made at halftime by Minnesota, but looks like both teams are getting ready to make some more. Iskandarian working his way through, but it was taken from him. So Carlos Leatherman is coming on for Minnesota and he will replace Mikel Marquez. Leatherman making his 14th appearance this year. Only the third time he's come off the bench. 18 year old played 20 matches last year with MNU FC2. Came out of the Minnesota Academy. And Leatherman, as we told you earlier, his coach told us, will be leaving shortly for college. He'll be playing at St. Louis. It'll be Griffin Dillon coming on for Salt Lake, replacing Jude Wellings. Dillon, 20 years old, played for Real Monarchs back in 2021, then went to college, played two years at the University of Maryland, and then signed back with Real Monarchs in 2023 this year, but in February of this year. Foul here against Minnesota to finish on Dillon. 15th appearance this year and only the third time he has come off the bench. Pretty good ball there, but no one was able to get a touch on it. So Smur takes it for Minnesota, and they try and transition quickly back the other way. Dunbar can't run this down, and it's played back to Delgado. So much work, really, for both goalkeepers in the first half. But since Salt Lake scored less than a minute into the second, a lot of the play has been in the middle of the field which is of course to the liking of the team that's ahead by two goals, not the one that needs to score two.
Jesse Kahn for Dunbar. Have not called Cameron Lacey's name much tonight. Such a great June and then the hat trick to start July, but has not gotten many chances so far tonight. Jockison back the other way. Plays it towards the middle and open space, having an opportunity just wide. Wonderful strike there from Bertine Jackson, and just missed outside the target. Fans, this broadcast is presented by Alina Health, official healthcare provider of MNUFC2. Just past the 70 minute mark at the National Sports Center in Blaine, Minnesota. Justin Galanti, the whole crew, so glad you're with us. Salt Lake trying to close out three more points on the road. Jacasson thought about another strike from far out. Vasquez did as well. Good step forward by Leatherman to take the ball. He starts the break back the other way. Carlos Leatherman. To the middle of the pitch. How about this from Kahn? He misses. Jesse Kahn with two goals already this year was making a bid for his third. And it just sailed up and away on him. Minnesota had a bunch of chances, a bunch of really good chances to score in the first half. Unable to capitalize. And now staring a 2-0 deficit in the face. And this is a match, kind of a microcosm of what Cameron Knowles was talking about in our conversation this week when he was talking about the season at large. This just misses from Pacheco. He said early in the season, you look at the schedule, there are so many games, so many chances to pick up points, and then they go away rather quickly. Well, in a match, you fall behind, feel like there's so much time left to find an equalizer to come back, and you're down by two, you still have basically the whole second half left. And all of a sudden you look up, you're about to cross 72 minutes, and it's still 2-0 here. Oh, a slip from Leatherman, a chance, a stop by Smurr. Rebound is still loose and Smurr falls on it. Absolutely robs Jacasson and keeps it 2-0. Alex Smurr keeps Minnesota alive tonight with his biggest save of the match. And now, Clear foul there, and a yellow shown to Salt Lake's Julian Vasquez. He just grabbed the hold of Cameron Lacey and wouldn't let go. Another look at that last stop by Alex Smurr. Jockerson found himself free and Smurr just walled up and made the stop. So we remain at 2-0. Still some time left. But Minnesota's gonna have to get one back here quickly. Gotta score one before you can score two, of course. Khan trying to find Lacey. Everybody goes down. And no whistle yet. And now, what do we have? Three players down for the visitors. There was a collision in the box there, and the ball was kind of just laying next to Delgado. 
he wasn't holding it, but it almost looked like it was just leaning up against his body. So Lacey went after it, and that might have caused a little more harm. You see, nobody's got it, and then Pierre was there, and Lacey tried to take it from him, and all three players end up down for Salt Lake. No malintent there from Lacey, just trying to make something happen. Saw the ball free, so he went for it. But ended up in a bit of a scary situation. Two goals tonight for Real Monarchs. Elijah Paul in the 38th minute on a PK, and then Daron Iskandarian less than a minute into the second half. And luckily here, all three players that were down, Pierre, Nigro, and the goalkeeper Dogano all up and seem to be okay. And I think Lacey is still asking why he wasn't allowed to do what he did. But for the safety of the game, I think that was the right determination by Deshaun Beard. No cards out of that situation. And we play on here. Nice moves by Nigro to keep the ball. Showing off his footwork. He got tripped up. But we'll play on. And now with Nigro down, we have a whistle. Don't think there was a foul. Just making sure he's OK. Looks like Nigro is going to have to come off. You know, there's that off field treatment rule, of course, where if the training staff comes on the field to help a player up, then that player has to come off for three minutes for coming back on or can be subbed off. And clearly, the coaching staff for Real Monarchs was not happy that Nigro was forced to come off. Obviously a very important piece for them that they do not want to sub off here. But it looks like they'll play without him for a couple minutes. Up by two goals in the late stages here. And now Uche went flying over the top and the foul goes against Salt Lake. Elijah Paul gets called for it. Things starting to get really intense here down the stretch. Here is Dunbar. And a foul just outside the box. And a free kick coming for Minnesota. It was close, but certainly appeared O'Driscoll was just outside the 18 yard box. So it'll be a free kick in a dangerous area for Minnesota. 79th minute here. Still 2 0. A spot we've been sitting ever since the 46th minute. Lacey and, or Dunbar and O'Driscoll were standing there. Now O'Driscoll vacates and leaves it. To Cameron Dunbar. Dunbar. And it will be a Minnesota throw. No. Well, a little confusion here. It will be a Minnesota throw. And now a takeaway. 
by Griffin Dillon. And now a throw for Salt Lake as we are into the 80th minute. Some good matches going on right now. New York City looked like it took a 3-0 lead over Red Bulls, but two quick goals, and in the 80th minute, that match is 3-2 now. Huntsville up 6-2 on Orlando City. Still scoreless between LA Galaxy and St. Louis. LAFC up 2-0 in the first half on San Jose. This would really be a huge confidence booster and frankly a statement from Real Monarchs if they could finish this tonight. It would be three in a row unbeaten and a big win on the road against a team that entered this weekend in playoff position in the Western Conference. Cameron Lacey. Trying to get it to Pacheco. But Nigro, who's back on after having to spend a couple minutes off the pitch, got in the way of that pass. Throw for Salt Lake here. Lisa Randall is on for Diogo Pacheco. And Cameron Lacey will step off as well and be replaced by Cooper Lejewski. And Rory O'Driscoll will leave and be replaced by Cage Romanchin Jr. So three very young players coming on here for Cameron Knowles in the late stages and for Elisa Randall, 17U Academy player. This is debut with MNUFC2 and immediately with the ball on his foot. Here comes Randall trying to make something happen right off the bench, gives it up for Leatherman. Cross comes into the box, no one gets a touch on it. All the way through though to Dunbar. Tried to get it to Khan and it was knocked away. So you see those three substitutions running across the top of your screen. Time running low now here for Minnesota. Clock certainly not their friend. Shots are 12-12 in this match. Five on target for Real Monarchs, two for Minnesota. Visitors have had about 52.5% of possession tonight. They've held an edge around that number for quite a while. They've really tightened up defensively since scoring the second goal less than a minute into the half. Played back here to D. Lens Pierre. See at the bottom of your screen there, Izzy Amparo getting set to check in. And earlier, by the way, we were just told that there was a yellow given to Moses Nyman for Salt Lake. So just some housekeeping there. That is the 
ninth total yellow card issued in this match and the sixth against Real Monarchs. Good play to get the ball to Leatherman there by Randall. Leatherman to the outside, back for Elisa Randall. Certainly mishit that one though. And cleared all the way down. Jeremy Rodas able to give it up to Mosquera. Now it's Dunbar who had all those chances in the first half, tried to put that one across. Run down in the corner by Randall. And he's won a corner here for Minnesota. Starting to get to do or die time for MNUFC2. Jesse Kahn will take this corner. Now, Real Monarchs making that substitution we told you about. Izzy Amparo in. And he is replacing Julian Vasquez. Amparo, 16 year old, comes on. As Vasquez's night comes to an end. Khan, good service, but sent well high by Cece Uche. Ended up somewhat unmarked there, but Uche sent it well high. Into the 87th minute. And Delgado, of course, in no rush. Hoping he is closing in on his third clean sheet of the year. And it would be a second consecutive clean sheet for Real Monarchs, fourth overall this season for the team. Still a little bit of time left though. Another substitution here for Salt Lake. Abuk Bikiombi is in. And he is replacing Daron Iskandarian, whose goal right at the start of the second half really cemented what Salt Lake was doing tonight. Gave them the 2-0 lead. And the score has not changed since then. Iskandarian and Elijah Paul with the two goals this evening for the visitors. Trying to finish off what would be a very impressive victory on the road, a fifth road win of the year it would be. This season, if this holds, of Salt Lake's 21 points, 15 of them will have come away from home. Minnesota entered tonight with three consecutive clean sheets. Playing extremely well off that 4-0 win against Portland. But things have not quite gone their way this evening. Some early chances were not taken advantage of. And give the credit to Salt Lake. Took advantage of their opportunities. And now closing in on a big victory on the road.
Leatherman trying to find somebody, but Real Monarchs putting up a wall near that midfield line and not allowing Minnesota to cross it with any possession. Now they finally do, but it's sent a bit too far by Romanchin. And it will be a throw for Salt Lake. Leatherman took a hard hit there from Dillon and draws the whistle. Fourth official, John Krill indicates three minutes of added time and now Deshaun Beard will add one more booking. Griffin Dillon gets the yellow. Dylan gets a little bit of a talking to there as well. Khan finding Dunbar. If you can get one here, you still never know. It would have to be a miraculous effort. But Salt Lake continues to hold up very strong defensively. Perhaps just moments away from a big victory. Here is Dunbar. Now Zaydan Bello lost his footing. It was a clean defensive effort. And now back the other way, Salt Lake. Jockison, who's had a very good night, trying his luck and just missing. Barely outside that post, Jockison has showed off his impressive shot tonight. First round pick out of the University of Pittsburgh. Foul here against Salt Lake. Getting restarted quickly, that is wide from Randall. Good opportunity while Salt Lake was unsettled. And it might be the last opportunity for Minnesota tonight. How much time will we have left tonight? And now a yellow is shown to the goalkeeper, Fernando Delgado, for delaying play. And his complaint was that Dunbar kind of kicked the ball back to him and kicked it past him. But another yellow for Salt Lake there, but looks like it won't matter in about 15 seconds time. Maybe a little more than that because of the delay of play. Mansion pushed down. And now it's only a matter of how long Deshaun Beard allows this to go on for. He's gonna bring Minnesota back here to restart. A lot of contention on both sides with the whistle the last couple minutes. Here is Leatherman. Knocked down, cleared away. Minnesota trying to keep going forward here. Jesse Kahn trying to get through a couple defenders, goes down to his feet, still fighting for it, and gets it through to Leatherman. Now Nigro has it, working his way into the corner, and it will be a corner for Minnesota. We'll have to take this quickly here. Kahn will take this. Perhaps, perhaps the last action of the night. Khan sends it in low, it's headed away from trouble. Directed back into the box, cleared away by Salt Lake. Not over yet, still waiting for that final whistle. Randall 
to Khan, back for Randall making his debut tonight. Just misses wide, and that is going to do it. Real Monarchs come on the road and pick up three points with a 2-0 victory over Minnesota United 2. An excellent performance tonight from Salt Lake, and now it's time for our man of the match. With a goal very early in the second half that you'll see right here, Daron Iskandarian is tonight's man of the match for Real Monarchs, and that is brought to you by Adidas. Iskandarian, his second goal of the year, and Real Monarchs, a 2-0 winner. That will wrap things up from the National Sports Center. So glad to be with us tonight for our entire MLS Next Pro broadcast crew. I'm Justin Galanti. One more time, your final score, Real Monarchs 2 and Minnesota United 2-0. Don't forget, you can watch MLS Next Pro all season long and MLS Season Pass on Apple TV and MLSNextPro.com. Have a great night, everyone. This copyrighted broadcast of MLS Next Pro may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcasted without the express written consent of Major League Soccer.